Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the Round Table of Dim Lighting, we're talking about our college experiences and how that translates into the advice that we're now giving to anyone who cares to listen, and maybe. Mostly uh, our children. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> If they care to listen. Yeah, you know, they don't usually. Lily is on the precipice of college, university life. Uh, she's on the quarter system, so as of the release of this, she's still like three weeks away from going off to school. Now, I do anticipate that I will share with you my experience of taking Lily off to college, and that, so, that's an entirely different ear biscuit that probably like a month from now is gonna come out. But I'm definitely in this headspace of every day is one less day we have her in the house and there's kind of this like, I feel this urge oh. to say, oh yeah, I gotta tell her about this. I can only imagine I gotta te- you're, you're becoming the like, I gotta warn her about this. Overly sentimental dad who's g- giving advice that I makes everyone feel awkward. I haven't gotten into it's overly like a TV trope. <laughs> sentimental speech. I mean, I'm sh- there's a lot of emotion that's wrapped up and I'm saving all of that for <laughs> for that ear biscuit later. But I have observed that like, I'm like, oh crap, it's like, I mean, it's not like we're not gonna be in communication. Okay, we're she, both still gonna have right. phones uh, but there is a sense of like. She's not gonna be like an embedded journalist in North Korea. Is it, No, that is not where she's studying. She's just going to college. <laughs> uh, but there is a sense of if there's little packets of advice that I can give. You know what, that's what you need. Now's the time to do it. Pa- you, literal packets. Advice packets. Here's another folder, honey. I put this one together last a night. A dossier. <laughs> <laughs> well, honestly, I mean, we're ta- we're talking about it a lot, but I think a lot of what I'm sharing today, I I, I don't in- anticipate she's going to listen to this podcast, but I'm kind of going to coalesce well, and you run some things off of you. Put it in a packet. We should make some... a text file and put it in a packet. No, I'm gonna. I said I'm gonna run some things off of you, like. But I, what I meant was bounce some things off of you. You can run off and of then me. I don't care. Maybe I'll take. Maybe if you have some advice. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe I think we're both. Bring, br- we're, gonna, I think we're both bringing. You're going to be here too, right? Uh, <laughs> We're both bringing equal, and maybe uh, I mean, whose va- advice is more valuable? That's for you to decide. Well, I'm going to take credit for all of the advice that I'm uh, going to turn around and give to well, Lily after this. One thing I do want to I do want to say up front uh, is there there was a podcast in the past in which we were talking about something related to college, and I think I gave some unprompted and definitely unsolicited advice and got some feedback on Twitter about it, and it was enlightening. Oh, you got feedback on Twitter? Yeah. That happens? Yeah, and uh, and I do try to I do try to listen, you know. I, I'm, we're just throwing things out into the ether, and, and, and we, we do wanna know when we've, uh, we've gone out of bounds. And I think the, the thing that people said was, I can't remember exactly what the point I was making was, but it was very much from my personal experience and the way that college Uh, happened for me, which isn't representative of everybody's experience. And I, and you know, my parents paid for my college. I didn't have to work when I was going to college. Um, I wasn't going through, it wasn't difficult for me from like an emotional standpoint. Like a lot of people are struggling with all kinds of anxiety and, and depression and social anxieties when they go to college. Like I didn't have, I didn't have that. It was like one of the best times in my life, right? And so, I come from, uh, a, my experience is not gonna be representative of everybody's experience. And so just, I guess well, ultimately what I'm saying is that I understand that now and so the things that we're talk, gonna talk about today are not prescriptive. It's not necessarily advice first. It's more, this is what we kind of thought that we learned and if, as we think about our kids going off to school, these are some of the principles and some of the things that we'll be telling them that we actually do think is good advice for them. Uh, but you kinda have to take it and filter it through your own personal experience and don't take it as a prescription from a guy who had a pretty privileged experience. And that's, you know what? That's, that's, that's the message. I agree with that, I'm gonna do the same thing. I think you can apply that uh, 
disclaimer to every episode of Ear Biscuits, but there are certain points when, I mean, we are saying this is advice, but as I talk to Lily about things, a lot of, I mean, there is this dance of, this is my perspective, try this on for size, but my size doesn't fit you at every turn. So it's a, it's a dialogue and it's not, there's not an absolute in the way I present things. I mean, parenting at this age, parenting an adult <laughs> in any form is kind of like, what's going on here? But it, I mean, there's still space for it, but it feels much different and it's, and it's malleable and it's more conversational. And I think that's, that's part of what this Twitter thing is. It's part of the conversation that we have on Ear Biscuits. We, you know, we don't present things as authority and sometimes when it seems like we do, it's it's nice to hear, but it's not surprising for us to yeah. hear that we we're only a representation of our own experience, and we're trying to s- kind of just put it out there within yeah. those boundaries. I think that parenting at this point, I, I think that as your kid gets older, it's uh, and this is difficult for a parent, but you go from if you think about like let's just say a sports analogy, you go from being the coach to being the spectator, right? There, there, there is, a, there is a, a moment there where you feel like, hey, things that I say seem to, ma- seem to matter <laughs> and the, the rules that I establish- They have immediate impact. Seem to have immediate impact. And then slowly you're like taking off the softball shorts. You've got other pants. You've got like parent pants. You take off the softball coach shorts and you put on regular pants. Probably, you know, probably khakis. You take the whistle and you and you give the whistle to the referee or the yeah. you know, and you take the hat off and you you sit down in the stands and you just yell a lot. And your kids probably aren't listening to you. <laughs> You're just embarrassing yourself and the family. I think this is kind of a teaser for the conversation we'll have after Lily leaves, so we can come back to it. But now let's just unabashedly get into the cold hard advice that everybody should take without question. Well, I do want whether you're going to know, into college or not. Before you go, because uh, I mean, I don't want you to miss the opportunity to tell everybody that you are you've made an appearance on a hot dog is a sandwich, the Mythical Kitchen podcast. Josh and Nicole have me on. You can listen to it now on 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 their show. A hot dog is a sandwich, talking about being a picky eater. Josh said at some point. I don't know how much they edit their podcast, uh, so it may be edited out, but what he said to me in the middle of the podcast was, wow, this didn't go the way, this isn't going the way I thought it would. So that's, wow. my, that's my teaser. Okay. I, don't, I haven't talked to Josh about it I afterwards. I might have to listen now. But um, yeah, it was apparently not how, what he expected from the conversation. I, I, and I don't know if that's a good thing. Did it get really serious? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Oh, really? I think that was it, yeah. Wow. I don't, maybe, so you got maybe like, he would use other terms. You got like therapeutic? No, uh, I might have gotten defensive. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't think I was gonna come across that way, so you'll have to be the, be the judge of it. Uh, it, was a, it was a good conversation. I really enjoyed it. I have no regrets. Okay. Um, I just don't know if they do. I should talk to them about it, yeah, you not you. Find, you should find out. Hot Dog is a Sandwich, check it out. Uh, they do food debates every week when they don't have a guest, which is uh, unusual to have a guest. But it does happen. All right, um, I mean, yeah, for for our experience, we went to North Carolina State University in in the fall of 1996. Things were different then, we drove it was like a 45 minute drive from our home. I was roommates with my best friend since first grade. Hey, that's me. And we didn't really know anybody else, but we knew that we were gonna get involved in an organization called Campus Crusade. And um, I, I think that, that would, as we talked about, that defines a big part of well, our college experience. At least experience. that organization, as we'll, as we'll share later. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and, I had, well, just to set the stage even further, I had a serious girlfriend who was a junior in high school and I would go home every weekend to see her and also to get my laundry done and to pick up all the cans of Mellow Yellow that my mom had bought me. Mm. Um, Mellow Yellow was not available in Raleigh. (laughs) It was, but we had to buy it with your own money. 
Right. Uh, I did have a job on campus. I worked at the genetics lab, like the work study program. I was washing the dishes of the um, of the, 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 sci- dishes? the scientists who were doing some sort of genetic experiments on corn. I then had to clean all the beakers and test tubes, and that's a meticulous process. If you, you sure they weren't just eating well. corn and you were cleaning their actual dishes? I think that's that I is think, possible. I think they were selling you on like you're involved in the science here, and you were just <laughs> washing dishes of scientists who like corn. It, I mean, if they were feeding themselves with pipettes, then I guess that's what I've was seen happening. That happen one one kernel at a time. Um, it's a great way to eat corn. It really helps with portion control. We had visited campus once, at least. I think well, Michael we, Juby, his, Michael Juby's dad took us to campus our senior year and like we walked around campus. Well we only applied to two schools, Carolina and State. Uh, both were accepted to both. I thought we applied to uh, UNC Asheville to their film school. We didn't actually, no we didn't actually apply. We were going to but we got talked out. No, that was it. like, that was more junior year conversation when I thought I might play basketball there. But no, in the end, we only applied to Carolina and State, and both there was, got accepted in there engineering. Was, there was serious consideration of going to Carolina. I mean, I, the story I tell is, I applied to Carolina so that I could get accepted and then say no to reject them. But the, the reality is, I, I was not like a loyal State fan versus Carolina. I was actually sort of like growing up a Duke fan. I was a State fan. You were a State fan, and I've, but I, I, didn't, I, I didn't really I felt have like mo- I couldn't do it. I didn't have a Go lot of Carolina. allegiance. But one boy, once I dyed my backside in the wolf pack red, I think that's how you do it. You stick your butt in the blood when you get there. Just kind of dip it, um, the wolf blood. There was no going back. I no hate, wolf I died. Hate the blue. The entire pack part. donated a little bit of blood, so they were yeah, they, they were a little peakish wolves, for yeah. a few days. But they, you know, no wolves were harmed ultimately in the butt dipping of blood. I re- remember that we. We both brought our bikes to campus. We've, oh, yeah, it was we like, did. we had never been big. on a place so large that you were expected to walk across the whole thing. Well, we've been riding our bikes a lot. Just, we always rode our bikes. It was part of our identity. It was part of our brand it was we're boys with bikes. Well, once we got licenses, not so much, but. <laughs> but I think someone had told us like, it's a really big campus and you guys are way over there on East Campus in Syme Dorm. So I mean, it's going to take you, you know, a couple of days to get to the other side of campus if you have to walk. Well, to get to the dining room, it did take. I mean, it probably took twenty minutes to walk to just walk straight, yeah, all the way across campus to the dining hall, which that was that was fun, you know, having that excursion. That bagged milk, like see, seeing like who from your dorm you could get to get, get together with and all leave at the same time. Oh, we're still waiting for Hugh. Where's Hugh? He's up there being weird in his dorm room. We're gonna have to leave him. Remember Hugh? Unfortunately, I don't. Must have been not very. Maybe that wasn't his name. Memorable. He's an interesting guy. You my Grant? Grant. Oh, Uh, Hugh Grant is an actor. (laughs) Yeah, Grant is his name, not Hugh. (laughs) Hugh, where's Hugh? I don't know a Hugh. (laughs) Maybe, maybe he would show up if I I knew his name was Grant. but yeah, we'd ride our bikes all around campus. But the thing now that I superimpose on the experience is just what an opportunity for a, I'll call it a fresh start. It's its just an opportunity to redefine yourself. If you've ever had one, if you're, I mean, this is it. If you're going off to college and you know no one or, you know, we had to be in cahoots because we knew each other. If I was gonna change my name or adopt a French accent or start wearing a different type of pants. Mm, this is the time. This is the time to do it. The name thing is a big one. <laughs> a lot of people, I, this is my opinion, okay? If you're gonna change your name, you don't like your name and you wanna go by your middle name or you don't like your middle name, you wanna go by your first name, you wanna go by a new nickname. Chaz. This is kind of the last acceptable place to do it. If you wait until you're out of college and like you got a job and then just one day you're like, my name is Mark now. That's tough to do. I mean, we knew a Chip who changed his name to Peter and that was in middle school. But Chip, Chip is a nickname that your dad gives you, Chip off the old block, you know, or maybe you're a Trey if you're a, a third, which you could have named, you could have been a Trey. You could be a Trey, like you could have changed yeah. your name to Trey 
because Trey is when you're not a junior but a third. And That's right. you, they're in an alternate universe. There's a there's a ret and Trey dot com man. I know that's not our website anymore, but James it and does Trey. redirect to mythical dot com. What about James? It'd probably be James. James and Trey. And Trey? There's a James and Trey. There's a hey, listen. There's a Trey and James. Chaz and James. Ch you could have been a Chaz. This is the time to do it. Don't wait until now. If you transfer colleges, maybe at that point. Yeah, that that's the reason to transfer. Name because changes. you're not happy with your name or like what type of pants you're known for wearing. Or if you're like, I'm gonna start, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get one earring or I'm gonna start painting my nails. Whatever you wanna do, do it. But this is really, and I'm not saying you can't do any of those things later, but like this is the real time. We to like show up on campus with like a scarf and, and you know, I and mean, like one of your eyebrows shaved down the middle and just call me Mark now. We're kind of talking out of two sides of our mouth because when we when we went to uh, college, I didn't do this, by the way. Well, we kept we did it a little earlier, but I do think we we fully asserted ourselves. I mean, we were very much dedicated to our band, the Wax Paper Dogs, at our so in our senior year of high school, yeah. and at, throughout that summer before our freshman year, like we had gigs, we had the biggest gigs that we had had. Biggest gigs, now, man. I mean. It's that we're talking like the Christian indie band circuit centered around uh, Harnett County. We played on Cumberland that stage. County. We played like on that Fayetteville, stage. Fayetteville, North Carolina. In Benson, in yeah. that park in Benson. Yeah. It's that's probably named after a Confederate soldier. To Mule Days. Yeah, we played on that stage. But we, I mean, we were bleaching our hair yeah, we and were. like you were, I was I was turning your hair into like a giraffe pattern that looked absolutely amazing, but was mistaken as a soccer ball. We would I mean, how many soccer balls are black and yellow? Some, but that, I mean, it's a giraffe. Come on, I knew it was a giraffe, but I'm just saying a lot of people thought it was red, a white, ball. and blue for July Fourth over that the summer leading into our yeah, got to be patriotic uh, freshman year in college. So like we were wearing these the huge Jinko jeans with the chain wallet and. Uh, the the thrift store shirts, like the thrift store golf shirts, yeah, and our and our hair, what my hair was like standing up and and bleached, and that even went into my sophomore year because that's when Christy and I met, and like the last time my hair was like big and bleached was when we first met, and then it started to tone down over the course of become like more the professional. Well, we we weren't in the band anymore, but like as freshmen. Like we had a very assertive looks, you know. I mean, you were tall as all get out, and 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 scarily skinny, right? And with these huge Lean. jeans, it just looked. I mean, you're we're riding these bikes around. I look campus. like Gumby. I mean, were those jeans? I never on. really thought about the. You know, I enjoyed getting attention for the way that I looked, but at the same time, really? it's, it's maybe hard to believe. <laughs> at the same time, I do not honestly recall having this awareness that everyone was looking at me as my, I rode my bike across campus. But we we were some of the more aesthetically notable people on campus. I'm not saying we were cool looking, we were just different it looking. But to put that in proper context, it wasn't that difficult in 1996 at NC State University to- To stand out? Just to, to stand out, you know. Uh, it's probably much more difficult today. We stood out more than I thought I did in my own mind even though I did it on purpose. I don't know, it's just weird how I can hold those two truths. But so we didn't, I didn't make a switch. We kind of doubled down, I think, with the way that we looked. So it was just like, I think, hearing friends talk about it later, they were like, wow, these guys are different. These guys are weird. Maybe a healthier way to think about it is less of take this as an opportunity to reinvent yourself it, reinvention for the sake of reinvention is not gonna last, right? It's gotta be motivated by something. But maybe it's taking yeah. a look at what things about you um, do you wanna leave behind in your in your former self, right? Into the, the high school self. You're not bringing that business with you to college. And maybe sometimes something like a name change or an aesthetic change can be symbolic of that you know, the external stuff is not really that important, but. That's true, yeah, it, you know, it, it can be a growth exercise and it also applies to starting a new job. Yeah, it I does. Think, I think most all of this applies. 
So there's other points. It's like, and if you have a new child, it's like, all right, I'm gonna be a different person to this child. Call me Mark, son. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of other opportunities where you can like completely reinvent yourself. You know, if you go on a, a vacation, you could, you could, have a trial run with a new self or a new name. Well, it's like the time we went to Emerald Point Water Park in right. Greensboro and acted like we were from Liverpool. <laughs> we're from Liverpool. Hello, and, ladies. And of course, these you know where the Beatles are from. The redneck girls that we were hitting on <laughs> didn't know how bad our Liverpoolian accents were, and so they just went with it. And Followed they, us around all day. We went with it, and that was. And then, the end and of then it. we got into our little Bowie Street First Baptist van. <laughs> Yeah, because we were there with our our church group. <laughs> they were like, "Those are like all." They were like, first of all, why guys did from you Liverpool are in the, the van? Why they, did they, you they, ditch everyone else with the church group? And why, when we would see you in different lines for slides and stuff like that, you were with these two girls and you had a bad British accent <laughs> and you would never talk to us because we even reinvented ourselves for the water park. You should try it too. I mean, in college, what an asshole move! I think. Listen, I stand by that. Well, yeah, because you're only thinking about you. But we were there with a group, and they were our friends. I'm not. We didn't completely abandon them. I saw them in the lockers. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is an opportunity. Yeah, we also have an opportunity to promote our merch. Well, and this is pretty exciting. I mean, listen, we're we're doing a a collab with. Masters of the Universe. I'm wearing the purple version of the shirt right now. Okay, it he, says Masters of the Mythical Universe. He read and Skella Link. High fiving. High fiving. I mean, our friendship even transcends the 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 He Man universe and brings together these two characters that would never high five. Right. Yeah, they've reinvented themselves. Uh, you can get this is that. an official collab. Yeah, as we, you said. we we've got the purple option, which Link is wearing, and we've got the black option. If you're feeling you know, a little dangerous. If you feel like you have the power. and uh, Or if your name is Mark. Uh, so pick that up at mythical.com while it's available. I mean, this is not gonna be around forever. This is a collab, y'all. Going to college is like your opportunity to go from being cringer to being battle cat. You know what I'm saying? Right, from all being you need is a helmet. Cyclops to being Tila. <laughs> um, okay. Another thing that I think is important, and this could seem a little bit cliche, so we'll get into some specifics, is the whole idea of making friends. Now, yes, I, I think that this is worth saying because especially now, like things have changed and everyone's experience is different and you know, lots of people are uh, commuting to school, living off campus, uh, living at home for, for a multitude of reasons. And so it can be more difficult when you've got some of these other circumstances than if you just, you know, you drop somebody off at college in another town and they've got to sort of make their own way. It's easier in, in that scenario. But I think especially if you are the kind of person that it's not easy for you to make friends um, and you, you know, you've got anxiety around expanding your social circle or whatever your particular challenges will be. I just think this idea of opening yourself up with discretion and wisdom, of course you don't wanna get involved in the wrong crowd of marks or anything like that. I was thinking Marxist when you, <laughs> you said that. Well, yeah, when you're going to college, you're gonna get involved with some Marxists. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it, man. <laughs> but <laughs> letting, your, just letting yourself be a friend to someone and also letting someone else be a friend to you. It, it has to be a conscious decision. I agree, I'll lower the bar. Lower um, the bar. And try to gamify it a little bit. Here's the idea that I've come up with. Collecting acquaintances. I'm pretty excited about this, so don't poo poo it. I'm talking about making a list of the types of people that you want to know and not necessarily be friends with or commit to, but just know. Just acquaintances, like uh, I want to know, a, I want to know a weird person. I want to know like a really brainy person. I want to, I want to know a foreign exchange student. What about that? I want to know, what about a, that? I want to know an upperclassman. So it's like you, you make this list of the types of people that you want to know because don't write it down though. People it, find that list. It'll but don't write it on your hand and then check it off when you're my in front number of them. seven. Like, you know what? I've always wanted to meet, like. Um, someone majoring in biology who 
wears suspenders. Okay, I think most of them do. That's not something you wanna say to someone, a biology suspender wearing major, you know? I always wanted to, you were on my list. Yeah. Just, I mean, but actually, maybe you could say that. Who would you add to your list? Um, Let's start making this list now if we had to go back. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna meet a bleach haired bicycle riding strange guy. Well, taking, I, I do believe that I do believe that you are serious in your, uh, in, in this, in this piece of advice. So yeah. I, I'm gonna take it seriously. It's nice to have a variety of people in your life to be exposed. I mean, well, it's, I, it's, I a, think it's that, an opportunity to expose yourself, but I, I not wish, in that way. I wish that we would have taken this. Now, we'll talk a little bit later about another principle that I think is important, which is kind of throwing yourself into a cause while you're in college, hmm. which we definitely did in a very big way. Yeah. Um, but given the nature of the thing that we got involved with, which was campus, you know, Christian campus ministry, we got involved with a lot of people from very similar backgrounds on very similar trajectories as we were, right? And I think the thing that I regret is not intentionally connecting with people who were different than me. Of course, NC State was different in 1996, but it wasn't that different. There were people from all walks of life, from all socioeconomic backgrounds, from all over the world all kinds of interesting perspectives and things yeah. that were being exchanged. And we closed and ourselves just, off I just dove right into the, you know, Southern white conservative Christian uh, heterosexual group, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just yeah. went real, real hard at mm -hmm. that. Uh, and I wish that I could have been like, oh, and it, but my mentality was not, my mentality going into college at the time was one of, other perspectives are not only different, but necessarily wrong. I'm coming to this campus with the truth. I'm bringing the correct worldview to this worldly place. And when you go into a situation believing that you've got the truth and it is your job to dispense the truth to the worldly corrupted people around you, yeah. Making connections with them becomes a transactional thing where the only reason you not make not really a, conducive to true friendship. You make it. You make it. It becomes transactional because I'm only befriending you so that I can share the gospel with you, so that I can tell you what the truth is. And most people aren't receptive to that, so you end up just hanging out with all the conservative white people who are receptive to that, who believe the same thing. It's a problem. So I wish I hadn't done that, right? Yeah, and all you, all we had to do is make a list of acquaintances. You don't have to make it this weighty thing where it's like I have to. I have to build meaningful, long-lasting friendships with all these different type of people. That you know, that sets the bar really high, and it's intimidating. But just having one one conversation with somebody, you know, in the first couple of weeks on campus, there's this thing that we've talked about called campus face. Yeah, you you just need to know that it's going to happen if you're on that type of campus where you're walking around and you you're seeing the same faces over the course of a year, and at a certain point, you realize. I know this person's face, but I've never met them or talked to them. And it's nice to have a few people that you've at least said something to, like um, leaned over in class and said like, "Have you? is this your first time taking chemistry? I just made that up on the top of my head, because then it's like. If it's chemistry 101, probably. It's a stupid question. Yeah, come that, up with that, something that else. That would be my follow up. Is your name Mark? That was just a stupid question. Have you ever, ever wanted it to be? Just to ask you, just, just so I could like, Break the ice. Do you have any pets? Uh, you know, I think so, some another type of person that's on my list, and it would also take the heat off of the criticism we placed on ourselves that you just laid on us, and we deserve it. Is athletes? Like, I would like, I would put an athlete on my list, or maybe you'd be. I, I want to be friends with a football player, and I want to be friends with a track and field artist. Artist is that's uh, the correct term, or a, a graffiti artist. That's someone I would like to know in my life now. I think I think I can make a list of acquaintances now. Yeah, this and is I pretty think, much a principle to apply to any point. Artist is is going to be in the top five for me? But athletes had a tendency; they they lived in this bubble on campus, which we penetrated because we were so far from the dining hall that they allowed us at the extreme east side of campus to go to the much closer athletic dining hall case. Case Dining Hall. Named after a coach, Everett Case. Much smaller. It was. Much it, better food. Much better food. They, they served steaks. steaks. Yeah. And it was only athletes, except for the people from our 
like the three dorms way over there where we were. Yeah. And so it's like these scrawny kids in like really well, huge clothes. Let me just say, I, I was mistaken as a member of the basketball team many times. So don't don't le- don't put me into the scrawny kids with big clothes group. I was. They not may mistaken. have thought that you were the manager for the for the basketball team, but they thought <laughs> I was on the basketball team, and I went with that. Okay. The lunch ladies did but the other athletes n- knew who was on the basketball team <laughs> and you weren't one of them. So it was like, yeah, right. we, we actually got these strange looks and we stopped going, but I went there enough to know, and we ha- we did have a few athlete friends. We had a football player friend. Our and, roommates, not roommates, but our right next door were both on the football team. And then uh, Jackie was a swimmer. Yeah. And they're so isolated, they're in this bubble. They do nothing but sports. I mean, so, it really goes for them too. They need to make a list of like, hey, I need to have a couple of acquaintances who aren't athletic well, now so that can, I can realize that the world is much broader. But now they can, like, NCAA athletes can get sponsored. So now you can like hang out with somebody who's got like a deal with like the local Italian restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and maybe get a free, free pasta. Um, uh, for, I, I, I got some stuff on breaking the ice and having conversations. That first week of class, you need to you need to introduce yourself to a stranger in every class in the first week. It's leaning over and saying something, just so, because you know you're gonna be in class with these people. If it's one of, I mean, Kim 101 is an example. It could have been a thousand people in that classroom. No, that's not true. It could have been 300 people in that classroom. And now you're getting closer. Okay, okay. that's still a lot of people. Yeah. But it would have been better if you'd just gone with a thousand. Okay. But you're gonna see all these people and you're pr- but at a, in a large classroom, you're tempted to never talk to anybody unless they force you into groups, which they usually don't. And yeah, it's, so it's like just breaking the ice for a conversation, what it does is even if it's just, hey, my name's Link, I just wanted to uh, introduce myself because I know you know, we're gonna be in class. And like, oh, it starts a conversation. It basic, starting a conversation opens up the door for someone else to more easily talk to you later. And, and you typically sit in the same, you don't have to. I don't actually remember this, but for whatever reason, we ended up sitting in the same places in all the classes, no matter how big the rooms were. Creatures of habit. Uh, and so you but do yeah. end up, it's like, oh man, I was sitting next to this person basically all year. And, and when you make, this is the thing, you gotta do it in the first week, like you said, because when you wait, like if you in, initiate a conversation with somebody third week, it's like, whoa, whoa, what? You know, yeah. Now, if you haven't initiated in the third week, still do it, but just know that it's going to be harder. You need to do this. It needs to be pretty early, like right out of the gate. And then, yeah, okay, maybe you have an initial uh, awkward conversation, but next time they're going to initiate the conversation with you. And if they don't, you'd be like, oh, I'll talk. And then you got it. You go to the left side, talk to the person on the left side. I mean, there was a time on Good Mythical Morning where we talked about Miss Perfect, as we called her ad nauseum, but it's worth bringing up again that like, you know, Jill Wagner, later host of (laughs) Wipeout and now. uh, She's like a Hallmark specialist at this point. Hallmark movie star. Yeah. Uh, You know, we we got. Teen Wolf. Oh yeah, Uh, she was on Teen Wolf. She was also on Teen Wolf. Sorry. Yes, don't wanna sell Jill short. We're fans of the person, not the actress. Um, she was very sweet and came on our show and like endured some some awkward exercises awkward. for the sake of comedy. But we could have actually, you know, it's we were intimidated and we didn't want to talk to her, so we just talked about her. But we could have actually been friends. I mean, it's not like it would. Ju- it just had to be. Oh, I think you're pretty, so now we can't be friends. Well, we. Were, I was thinking more than friends personally, but. Uh, yeah, I, or you could have had that. I wanna move beyond acquaintances. I, I, I agree with everything that you're saying, but I, I think that. Just trying to ease them into it. But, but, I, but I, what I'm getting at is, and I think we did, again, all that we said before, you know, notwithstanding, if that's the correct use of the word, I try to avoid We've it. We've given unless, the disclaimer. Unless it's a, a, a legal document. Um, no, I'm saying that like, I didn't, we got involved with a particular type of people, but the thing that you left out is yes, we got involved with Campus Crusade, but we also, we got involved with InterVarsity as well, another Christian campus organization because they had a Bible study in our dorm that was a co-ed Bible study. InterVarsity was like living wild men and women studying the Bible together, what could happen? Crazy. And so we got involved in that group and uh, ended up like that fall going on a ski trip with that group of people. And there were like a really, there was like a, a really 
probably our strongest friend group at the time, freshman year. And it, I, yeah. I just think the idea of being like, hey, we got here a few weeks ago and now we're all getting in a car and going up to the mountains to ski and eat spaghetti together. And like, these were things that we had not done. Yeah, we had never gone on a trip with our friends overnight. Like we didn't have that yeah, type we just of didn't freedom do that uh, as high school students. So it was, um, but it was a it was a it real was cool. it was a real connection. It's fine. And for reasons, basically, essentially, the only the only reason is because we decided to kind of go all in with Campus Crusade on our sophomore year, and so that that connection with them in that Bible study was severed a little bit, and they just were, became just like less close friends. That idea of really saying, "Hey, I'm going to move," uh, yeah. The, the 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 strategy that you're talking about with acquaintances is to give yourself a, the largest social network the largest you know a number of options for uh, who am I actually going to be friends with yeah but there is a again this is difficult for a lot of people there's a barrier to be like I'm going to actually become your friend it's going to be more than a conversation in class let's go do something together oh here we are we're going on a ski trip together and this has got to be done with discretion because sometimes you get involved with some weird people especially the thing that happens a lot of times in freshman year depending on what kind of school you go to a lot of times you've got the freshmen who are there who are just there to party and yeah. you can kind of get sucked into that and then when they flunk out a lot of times they take a lot of people with them so you got to you you, you got to be you got to use some wisdom but I think that this idea of really learning what a friendship, and this may not be something that you've done, maybe you didn't have this type of friendship with somebody in high school, um, but becoming a part of someone's life so that the idea of going on a trip together or saying, hey, fall break's coming up, we're not going back home, we're all going somewhere together, like ha having that option, planting the right kinds of seeds with acquaintances that become friends, that become deeper friends, that become people that you're gonna know for the rest of your life, I think you gotta go in with that mentality. Especially like, you know, that wasn't, that's not our, that's not, that's not a challenge for us. Like we, we tended to kind of just go all in and get really personal and deep with yeah. people very, very quickly. And we've always been that way. So we make fast friends, but that's, that's kind of a, an exceptional way to approach it. If that's not a natural instinct, I think you've just gotta go in and say, I know my instinct is to isolate and to pull away and next thing you know, you're getting ready to go back your sophomore year and you're like, I don't feel like I know anybody. Yeah, I don't you, even know if I wanna go back. I mean, Lily had the option to put down a preference for, I mean, they did this whole like personality analysis of like, what time do you wake up in the morning? What time do you go to bed? What, you know, what is, how do you, what is your view on alcohol? Uh, you know, it's it's not allowed on campus anyway, but still, it's, it's a not good, allowed. That's my view. It's a good question. You know, lots of things like that. You get a sense of the person's sensibility, so you, they can pair you up with roommates that would increase the likelihood of compatibility. Um, you want the person who's going to sneak in alcohol with you, but you can also request to 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 stay in a a, a dorm room alone. Like that was an actual option. There's also an option to like have a roommate or an option to have five roommates where she's going, yeah, there's there's in like- In a big room. Yeah, one big room, not a suite, like one big room with two bunk beds and another bed. That it's, seems crazy to I me. I think that's overkill, but I don't know, I mean- I mean, that's like- Maybe it's cool. That's military it's, bunks. Yeah, it's bunks. But so, I guess some people would be into that, like camp life type situation. But I was glad that Lily didn't she she was tempted to say, as an introvert, I want to have my own room. But instead, when she was assigned to her certain part of campus, it was like, there's like a, a large assignment to a certain part of campus, and then underneath that, then you have dorm assignments. And she was able to connect with um, other people who were given that umbrella assignment to this area of campus on Instagram like everybody started started following that account to that area of campus. So she's going to be rooming with a biology major who wears suspenders. No, she's rooming with somebody who is also an introvert who was tempted to have to request a room Wrong. by herself and is also really into the Star Wars animated series. So oh, no. oh we're like they're deep. Spend a lot of time they're doing both that. deep in the fandom. So it's, there's a connection that's, that's there. That's cool. We didn't have they, we didn't have those tools. Yeah, they started talking over Instagram and then over text, and um, I was like, "Have you did you video chat?" 
She was like, not yet, not yet, you know, but it's like, ultimately they were like, you know what? We know enough about each other to request each other versus just going potluck. Well, and the reason I think did. that this is, now obviously we room with each other, so it's a little bit different. I wanted a biology major in suspenders, but I got a link. Uh, no, we chose each other and that made. It got weird when you made me talk about biology and wear suspenders. <laughs> yeah. That felt a little Especially when it was nothing but suspenders and there was no place to fasten them. <laughs> 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 there is a place to fasten them, but you gotta be careful. <laughs> Please erase that mental picture. It, we didn't have to worry about this because we knew we were gonna room with each other, but here's why I think that making the decision to have roommates is so important. Even for us, each one of us, now you were an only child, I, I had one brother, but he was in a different room and we kinda minded our own business. I, I, I am of the opinion that Developing the life skill of sharing a living space with another adult is a is an important thing to develop because chances are right. whether you're going to have roommates to help you pay your rent or you're going to you know get into a relationship where you move in with somebody or you get married, you're probably going to share a living space with somebody later in life, and this is the time to learn what that's like. And the thing that is so interesting, because me and you, as we've gotten older, have gotten more ret and more link than we were when we were That's true. Uh, freshmen in college. Because we all know that you're really concerned about order and cleanliness, and I'm not really. But that wasn't, it. I don't remember that being like a big point of contention and conversation or like stress in our relationship. Cause right. I don't, maybe went it was, along with it. maybe it was we just didn't, we didn't have enough things <laughs> in the room to create like chaos and I actually didn't, we, al we also, it was our living space that opened up into a public space that people could just walk by so I didn't feel like it was my bedroom that I could just make all dirty. It was like, oh we leave our door, that's another thing, we leave, left our door open to our dorm room which uh, I do recommend. Um, right. And unless you're wrestling, which we were doing one time and it was a little awkward. We were really into UFC, long story. Um, yeah. Link was wearing nothing but I, suspenders. <laughs> I thought the door was cracked. I know, I thought the door was shut, but it was cracked. We left our door open. A little bit. And but what and then you laid on me, because that's your, that's yeah, your wrestling that's move. That's my UFC move, that's my submission I move. I mean, I, do, I don't remember how we've told the story before, but well, in we've this told version, the story we're at least shirtless. 15 times. We're shirtless. In public. I mean, you were doing the I'm dead Yeah, move. yeah, yeah. And then I looked over your shoulder, not being able to move anything except my head. Yeah, that's the part of the plan. And I looked in the crack of the door, and Grant, it was Grant Hugh, as looking we call in, him. and I and I made eye contact with him, and then he walked away. He accepted it though. There was no ex. I had there was no, no there was no judgment. That was one of the cool things about Grant. Is there was no judgment. I think I, he I think he thought he knew what was happening, which to clarify wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. But he didn't care. I, I really gotta give it to him. Well, I don't wanna give it to him, but thank you, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, I, we, we learned a lot. I think we did, uh, I think it prepared us, and I think yeah. even subsequent to sharing the dorm room when we moved into an apartment, and then we added Greg, and then we added Tim, uh, I think that each one of those iterations was about sharing a space, and it's just like, just. There's a tendency, again, you a, a, a lot of folks, I get it, you wanna, I'm an introvert, you wanna isolate, you wanna withdraw, and when given the option, you will choose the path of least resistance, which is to be alone and have your own shit. Uh, but I think that it's, I just, I personally think that it's important if, now it may be something that is so, it would ultimately, putting yourself through that would be unhealthy for you, I can't speak for everybody. But I think for most people, making the decision to learn how to share a living space with another adult is, is a great thing for personal growth. Yeah, I mean, Christy's uh, first roommate in college, it was a complete nightmare situation. And then, uh, I mean, she was, if I recall the story correctly, she was like borderline abusive. Yeah. Like she would have these fits and she would like take it out on Christy, like yell at her and it was horrible. And then at a certain point, she couldn't, she was, I think she was having a breakdown and she ultimately, couldn't continue her first semester and left. And then the, uh, the, the roommate, not Christy. So then, yeah, and then Christy had her own. If you're in a situation a like that, yeah, you gotta. You, I mean, there's obviously you extreme got, situations. You, you we're, gotta we're get talking out about of that. normal, healthy, safe situations. 
But even a difficult, I mean, but even a difficult roommate, not an abusive roommate, if, right. if it's unsafe or abusive on any level, then yeah, you gotta get yourself out of the situation. But a difficult roommate, that could be, that could still be something that you need to, to do. You know, that could be, sure. cause you could learn how to be like, hey, let's have a conversation. Let's communicate about right. this. Let's communicate through this problem. You learn the ability to solve a problem through communication with someone, that is something that you will take and then apply in every single area of life as you as you move forward. Um, only other thing I got on the on the dorm front, shower shoes. Yeah, you don't wanna get the fungus. Like, I have to believe that we did use shower shoes. Yeah, well, there was like seven things that we were told by someone that we, we at orientation yeah. or something, then one of those with the shower shoes and we just did it religiously. It was very committed to that. I had to have been uncomfortable taking a shower next to other people taking a shower. I mean, there were, it was individual stalls. You couldn't see anybody. You could see feet. You could see feet. And then if you were in the last shower stall, you could see the feet of someone. Taking a dump. Taking a poop. Yeah. And that was just, I don't like that. I don't like showering next to somebody taking a poop. Right. So I would always go to the, I would go to the other far side. Yeah. Shower. That was the most, that was the, the most frequented one, was the nearest one to the door, away from the poop. Machine. I don't think I was ever comfortable with the bathroom situation, but it was it was good for me to to figure that out. Okay, next principle that we would like to explore is the idea of getting involved in something. Okay, okay. you talking about clubs? So clubbing again. I, I I believe, and this may not be true, but it's, it was true for me, and it's true for most everyone I've ever known, is that your potential to be like idealistic and passionate about a cause peaks between 18 and 22, right? And you, you, the, the adults in your life will try to tamper that down and will, tr will try to be like, ah, you just control yourself a little bit. I actually think that it's kind of an important formative stage in life to like throw yourself into something with reckless abandon because the way that your mind is developing and this, this stage that you're at, you have this just incredible capacity to just go all in on something with some other people who are going all in on something. It and can't you know be what? a blanket statement. I mean, you're not talking about a cult here. Uh, no, I mean, again, all this comes with the the idea that you gotta use some discretion. But let's talk about what happened with us. You know, But ch channeling that drive and acknowledging it and then acting on it is an exciting thing. Yeah, I, th I mean, I, I would say, a, I would say, I preface this with, please choose a good cause. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, uh -huh. don't go get involved in something that's do, bringing bad into the world, get, in some, get, get involved in something that's bringing good into the world. But a part of being that age, it's just kind of difficult to know what's good and bad. Because there's a lot of people who, and most people believe that they're right. Most people believe that they're what they're doing, everybody believes that what they're doing and what they're putting their time and energy into is the best thing for them in the world, right? Yeah. And that's what we thought. Again, coming into school as conservative evangelical Christians, we knew we wanted to get involved with Campus Crusade, and boy, did we get involved with Campus Crusade. We've told the story of exactly how involved we got to the point that we ended up working for Campus Crusade after we graduated, but being in the midst of people who were so passionate about something and who were like kind of following this ideology and this philosophy with reckless abandon to the point that it was um it was kind of becoming uh it, when you when you it be, it became it consumed a lot of your time i re yeah. I, I regret the specifics at this point in my life meaning that the things that that group stood for are not things that I stand for anymore and I have changed personally, but I feel like for me, it was an important part of like needing to believe something with a fervor and actually like know what it's like to commit time and make sacrifice to just kind of go all in on something. I, and maybe it's a personality thing, but for a lot of the people, maybe it's because I happen to be friends with a lot of people who kind of came through a similar situation where they were like all into evangelical Christianity and then they came out of it. But from a developmental standpoint, like believing something with fervor and then no longer believing it, 
because I, I'm not gonna say the prescription is get really into something and then realize that it was wrong later in life. You mm-hmm. can't write somebody's script. But you know, it might be like, I'm going to, I, like the, 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 uh, the group on campus that is, is, you know, there's so many different things that are, and it could be just be like, I'm really into intramural soccer, right? I mean, that's not, not a cause, but like yeah. throwing yourself into something that has a structure and a group around it. And I, I think some there's so many causes and so many good causes that you can get involved in. Or inter- interests as well. Yeah, yeah. I do think it's valid. Um, just because I just think it ends up leading you into some interesting places. You'll find yourself doing, I mean, for us, it was like we found ourselves going to you know foreign countries or foreign cities yeah. during the summers and going on retreats and spending a lot of time with people. Again, it rounds out your experience. We were talking about serious stuff. As a human. Yeah, to to commit yourself to something, and I like what you said, the sacrifice associated with prioritizing certain interests, passions, or causes is a is a big part of development. Because you can't you can't do everything, even if even if all options are good. I really regret never never playing uh, ultimate frisbee. Yeah. I seriously, a couple of weeks ago it was like uh, it came up in the car and Christy was like, you know, your dad's your dad's great at throwing frisbee. I don't know where that uh of course statement came from. I don't remember what we're talking about. And then I was like, you know what? I've never played ultimate frisbee though. It's like, really? For someone as talented as a fl- frisbee thrower as you, you've never I was like, yeah. I could that could have been my thing. You know? Running right. and throwing, and, they, and and state had like a intramural program where you could have easily played. I I thought of uh, ultimate frisbee as more of like uh, a Carolina or Duke thing, like a snooty thing. Like I knew that it happened on their campuses. Like there was a lot of you the, thought a lot of things was that a lot you of never shared with anybody. Ascot wearing ultimate frisbee throwing, you know frat guys, that was my idea of it, that wasn't for me. I played a little intramural soccer. And, and, and first, you know, and I think this is definitely personality based because some people just, you know, some people like me, and I will also speak for, for a link, tend to kinda, it's easy to kinda don't get, have to. to get super passionate about something and kinda, those tend to be the people who like become really religious at some point in their lives, you know. Um, and some people's personalities are not wired that way, so it might be like, hey, just, you, you know, being on the Ultimate Frisbee team, I don't need like an ideology to throw myself at. Yeah. I, I, ju- I just need a group of friends. But the reason I say a cause beyond just an interest is because because of that sacrifice. Yeah. You know, it's just like something where there's some kind of action involved, like we are going to do this together. We come together because we're trying to accomplish this thing in the world or this thing on our campus. To me, it's just, I I think there's a, again, it's just a a developmental thing. Obviously there's probably good that comes out of it if you're doing something for a good cause. But for me, it's just, it's harder to do that after college. Right. It's very hard to do that after college. Um, it is the time when your schedule lends itself to, again, not everybody, but your your schedule lends itself to, it's more flexible than it will be later in life. Um, one of the things, we, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I wanna open this can of worms because we haven't even talked about classroom and studying, but maybe we keep it short. But I, I did read a piece of advice that I didn't know if I agreed with because it just seemed thorny. And that was, as a freshman, Avoid a serious relationship. Now, I broke up with my high school girlfriend going into my sophomore year, and the period between breakup and meeting Christy, it was like there was a torturous period for me. It was like it was it was it was a tough like half a semester or maybe most of a semester. And that was my the start of my sophomore year. Mm-hmm. But I, and I went home so much my freshman year. It's like once I broke, once we broke up finally at soph- sophomore year, or it was the summer leading up to sophomore year. It's like I I had these regrets associated with things that I you know I had hamstrung my freshman year. So that was definitely my experience. And if I had to do it over, if if I had a you know 
a crystal ball and I knew that we were gonna break up, yeah, I would have I would have done it before I went off to college, but yeah. Um, I it's, a, it's, a t- it's a really it's tough a, thing. It's a to... tough thing, and like, you, you, I don't like dictating. When you fall in love, you fall in love. There's not much you can do about it. I mean, if I was, in, I don't. If I was in my, not worrying about people's feelings and just giving the advice that I truly believe in mode, <laughs> which I usually am in, and then have to keep myself from being that guy. Um, I would say if you're in, if you're going into college and you're dating somebody who's still in high school, you got to break up with them. As a, as a blanket general statement, knowing that there's all kinds of intricate things, but it's just, this is probably not gonna last and it's going to drastically impact your college experience. But you're the one who did it, so you need to be the one to talk about it. I'm just, I think the advice I give to, you know, is, I'm not giving it here, but maybe, I, I think the way that I would give this advice is more of like, it's cautionary tales. It's like, know what decision you're making and the impact that it can have before you start dating somebody a second, a third time, before you start accelerating that relationship. If you're on the precipice of going off to college, then you, you know you, there's some caution that you can have in making more of a calculated decision instead of just a, I'm just going with the flow of it and I'm just going, the only thing I'm taking to account are my my feelings or my infatuation. You know, it's 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 better when you're if you, if you're not in a serious relationship and then like over the summer before your freshman year, you can you can factor in other things and and besides just your emotions. Yeah. And but you could maybe even, curtail but it. But you could be in. But if you've been what, in a long term, maybe it's a long term healthy relationship. relationship. Yeah. Then that's well. But no. But I'm saying that even if. E- even if you're in a long-term healthy relationship, you need to know that the, if the person is not going to be at your college with you, the reality is is that the gravitational pull to that person in another place is going to have a drastic impact on your college experience. Now that may be something you just navigate and a, a deal with and accommodate. I'm not saying. Yeah, because if you really, if you have a healthy relationship yeah. where you care about each other and now it has to shift to being a long distance relationship because one or both of you are going off to different colleges. Well, if you really care about that person, then you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna have a conversation where you establish practices and maybe even boundaries to allow both of you to 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 live the life separately to the fullest, you know? Yeah, and and cuz you're going to you're also in the, like in you're in the midst of so much change. Yeah. You know, and I'm not I'm not here to shit on high school relationships. If if I if I could, you know. That's an image. If I could shit right on high school relationships, I would do it. No. Um Definitely get arrested for that. The the advice I tr- I would give to high schoolers in relationships is like, hey, just hold off on it being serious as long as you can. But it's you know it's humans. Yeah. It's 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 right. so difficult for people to not just basically start treating each other as if they're married to each other in this strict monogamous exclusive relationship. Like that just tends to be what people do even in high school. Even though you're changing so quickly that it's probably not advisable. But who listens to advice, right? But you're just gonna continue to change and your environment is changing so much, especially if you're going away to college. Now, if it's it's a completely different scenario for like, oh, I'm going to the local school, or I'm going to community college, I'm still living at home, we're still in the same place. It's like that, you're, the d- dynamics are in your relationships are not are gonna change that much. Right. So it's a case by case thing, but strongly consider it. Let's um, talk about studying yeah. classroom stuff. I mean, it doesn't matter really. Well, it's just like Greg let's said. Just, let's know, just end it. You know what you know. You don't learn anything. <laughs> no, I, I, I think we've we, we've got some good stuff here because this is what I would tell myself if I could go back. All right. I treated my class choice. I'm not going to talk about study habits. That you, if you if I got, you, got, if a you few. got some stuff about that. If I could have treated my class choice from a thinking from a different place. It was exclusively like, what is going to be easiest? Mm -hmm. Now again, I was getting an engineering degree which I knew would be difficult all on its own, but then, and there's core classes that you have to take, but then there's the electives. And I made my choices about my electives based on what I had heard. Like, oh, that professor is really easy, 
or that professor's really nice. But you know the one thing I didn't consider? What I wanted to freaking learn about. Yeah, I, I took I, an I, intro to film class and I, I was horrible at it because you had to write papers and I hated that. But, but it was an enriching it, experience. It, it was really eye-opening. Well, I, I, I was, I was and I, so and stupid. I regret, I regret not taking film. that class. I regret not taking that class given what we do now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and we were interested in video at the, that was, you at least made the connection to be like, I'm gonna take this intro to film class because we were like making videos, I guess, is why you were doing it. Yeah. But I, I wasn't even, I was like, well, I'll, I'll figure out how to make videos on my own. Like, and then the one class that I took, and again, I took it for the wrong reasons, just because somebody said it was easy. I know what you're going to say. The Alternative Futures class. Yeah. Which I've talked about multiple times, with a crazy professor who wrote the textbook himself, and it was all in single spaced, no diagrams, just text, single spaced, very few paragraphs, to be honest. And it was a fascinating class about futurism, and I'm so into that, and I didn't even understand that I was, because I never stopped to ask the question, what are you actually interested in? If I had a, put, here's the thing, you, you, you'll read this in a lot of like college advice articles, but I do believe that it's true. You know, once you're, if you're thinking about your GPA, once you get above, above, above a 3.5, the, cares, the yeah. difference between 3.5 and 3.9 or 4.0, for almost every job that you're gonna get, it's, doesn't, it doesn't matter, right? And so f do well in school, have a good GPA, but think about the holistic experience and what you're learning as an individual because you also might find, oh, this elective that I took made me realize that this is what I should be giving my life to. This is, I should change my major. So just think about what you're interested in. Let that drive your class choice. I wish I had done it and I hope that you do it. I can um, run some of this stuff by you, see, see what you're, take is on it because I think there's there's some nuance to at least this first one. Don't skip class. Agreed. I think the nuance is like every class is really about understanding the system like how to, it's like a game. Each class, there's someone in charge, there's a professor who's set up and they'll give you a syllabus, they'll show you how it works. It's like actually figure out how to beat the game. That's what the syllabus is, this is what, this is how much each thing is worth and this is why we're gonna be going through stuff. So you may find that you can skip a class and still beat the game. But, but don't start there. But that's a, it's a bad idea to start there and it needs to be a last resort and it needs to be more about the class than it is about whatever you're skipping to do. Like the th your job is to go to class is what I would tell Lily. That's your profession is to go to class and study. And, but that doesn't take all of your time, but you need to protect that time and then prioritize all the other things that we've been talking about around that because it shouldn't take everything. And because it, it's a maturity thing. But yes, yeah, a maturity thing. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be skipping class so that you can experience something else. You should be skipping class only if you have reasons related to the class that you don't need to be there or there's extenuating circumstances. So I'm not gonna say that doesn't exist because there's certain classes that suck and maybe you have to take them and you know if you can if you can find a way to pass the test in another way without cheating of course you know i think there's there there's room to bring some maturity to those decisions uh, and i'm going to pair that with uh go to office hours 100% and the reason why you're going is cuz you're seeing if they offer hidden rewards like a lot of professors First of all, if there's any opportunity to like make a connection with the professor, uh, get to know them where they know your face and put to, put a name with the face, it's like this is very important stuff whenever you need to have a conversation in the last half of the semester where you're not doing well and you need, you need to have a conversation. You're, you're building social capital with your professor is an important thing that may come in very handy when things get tight but, later on. And they reward people who show up at their office hours and like give them the answers. Like sometimes professors will just give you the test basically before the test. Say well, I would, yeah, I wouldn't worry, I wouldn't really worry about that type of problem, but I would worry about this problem. They kinda 
they like to give people an edge. Well, they, come ha- they the have office, office hours for a reason. It's to give people an edge. <laughs> yeah, right. All you gotta do is take it, it's so easy. And you don't have to go every single time, you can get an idea of, again, it's part of the game, you know? This is what this person, this is how they approach office hours. They know my face, they know my name, I accomplished that, but now I'm not gonna go back to this person's office hours because they're actually useless, they're a waste of my time. But that's, again, it's a maturity thing. It's And it's about, you know, again, this can get a little, I know there's so many like advice TikToks th- these days, but uh, so we don't mean to like just sound like a couple of dads, but we are a couple of dads and we have lived a little bit of life. And so I think that the, this is kind of what I tell my kids is like learning how to position yourself well for things. Like when you enter into a situation where they're in, in school is, you know, it gets more complicated, frankly, once you get out of school and it's like you don't get a grade at your job. It's not like the semester comes up and you're told, it's, it's, it gets a lot more gray. This is the last chance that you have to sort of have this very specific path that you've been given, like Link said, with the syllabus, and you know exactly what is being asked of you, and you know when you're supposed to show up, and you know what the assignments are. When you're presented with that challenge and that set of challenges, there's also these things where you can position yourself to succeed and have leverage and have options. When you skip class all semester, like you do it, like I do in some dreams sometimes, <laughs> and then have to show up for the exam, and you're not prepared, and you don't even know the professor's name. You haven't positioned yourself well, and again, some of it can seem like, oh, I'm just a a mouse running in a wheel. Like this doesn't seem applicable, and maybe it's not. Maybe the specific knowledge is not applicable. But learning how to submit yourself to a process and hold yourself accountable and see what it takes to be like, oh, I'm put in this situation and if I do X, Y, and Z, I get this result. That's a principle that will last your entire life, right? And if you can figure out how to do it in your early 20s, you'll be able to do it in your early 30s. You'll be able to do it in your early 40s. And I, that, that's, you know, not, I'm not saying my kids listen to me when I say it, but so I'll just throw it out to everybody. I think there was an aware, an, a, a lack of awareness on my part, not only in college, but also when I started working at IBM, that like there was a, there was another level of thinking that's like you step back and you're like, all right, this is, this is there's a system here. There's politics involved. There's social interaction involved. It's not just about having the right answers, making the making all A's and it's it's not just about the specific tasks, but it's about the entire idea of it. And I yeah. I think that's really what you're describing that's like would have changed my approach to have more of a um whatever thousand foot view is the right. Well, it's like you literally are a rat in a maze to use a crude analogy and a lot of times at that age, you tend to just see the maze right in front of you and the left and right choice and you wait until the choice sneaks up on you and then you make it. Whereas you actually have the ability to get out of your body, have an out of body rat experience and get above the maze and yeah. see, oh, this is the context of this whole thing and this is how you get to there. Oh, and I can back up even further and see the table that the maze is on and the room that the maze is in and the reason that this maze even exists. You've got to get to. You've got to elevate your thinking beyond just your immediate circumstances, and all of a sudden you z- 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 zero back down into that choice, and you're like, "Oh, this choice becomes much easier and much more motivated because I understand the context at the highest level." Yeah, I mean, you talk about having an out of body experience. I also want to say, um, you know, don't take any substance that somebody gives you, if, especially if you don't know them. Uh huh. <laughs> Oh God, when I started thinking about things like that, those are the things that I'm like, I'm just passing Lily in the hallway of our house. Don't take any substances. Don't take any substances from anyone that you don't. Keep an eye on your drink at all times. You know, it's just like, I'll just pass in the hall and I'll just I'll just give her little things like Very this. Very important. It's like, say, say yes to invitations, but always have an exit plan where you are in control of yourself. Don't, for, don't forget that you're an adult now. So act like an adult. Another, that wasn't mine, that was a piece of advice that I read. And another thing, and maybe this is my last piece of advice that I'm just uh, quoting, be prepared to be overwhelmed. 
and they go further and say, seek professional help when you need it. Yeah. I think, I, you know, it's a huge transition. Uh, and at, going back to the beginning of this thing, there's, it's, it's such an opportunity for a fresh start, but everything is gonna be new and it, it will be overwhelming. And making sure that you have proper support structure, you know that there are people who love you that you can go to or professionals that can help you, if you in certain ways that you, that you might need. Um, establishing those lifelines are gonna be very critical for anybody making any huge life change. And this is big as any. Yeah, and opening up to people, you know. Again, I I, I had the privilege of not dealing with um, being overwhelmed or being super anxious in college, but I know that that is an exception to the rule, and I don't exactly know what I would have done had I had encountered those things, right? I, I do remember, and I think I've told you the story of driving my, riding my bike all the way across campus past the dining hall in at the, like the end of the first week of school and I was like, I'm gonna go all the way to the far edge of campus and just see so I can say that I've seen it all. I've seen the boundaries and it felt like going to the edge of a flat earth and I, I got off my bike and it was past the UT dorms. It was kinda looking over, I think there was like the, where the baseball field was and I just remember standing there as the sun was setting and dismounted from my bike and feeling like I just needed to cry because I was like. There was no more campus. <laughs> there was, well it just, it was a physical reflection of I think my mental and emotional state of like I am, a, I'm on, I am on, I'm experiencing something and I'm on the edge of it. I'm on the edge of the rest of my life and I've, it was the first time that I kind of felt alone hmm. and it was scary. And then I got back on my bike and I rode back. Forgot and I was all like, about it. Never talked yeah, to anybody it like, about I it until now, until you're 40. <laughs> um, okay, well, I mean, I think we've covered it. If you listen to this, you're yep. ready for college. The definitive guide to college. You're gonna succeed. Complete it. You've got it. You've, you, you've you got it. this. Summa cum laude. Um, <laughs> You know and I, do, I know what, you know, I do believe that, I do b not believe that we've given you the definitive guide to college, but I do believe that if you're about to go to college, you've got this, believe that, and also uh, just be ready to, like Link said, be ready to communicate. If, if, the, if, if you start feeling like things are unraveling or things are getting tough, like know what your resources are going to be before you, uh, before you go in. But you and the network of people around you, you got this. You got this, I like it. Hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know what you uh, disagree with. <laughs> um, I'll give you a if quick. If Rhett said it. I'll give you a quick wreck. Um, unrelated to anything we talked about, just All something right, yeah, I watched. Yeah, let's go in a different direction. Uh, there's a documentary on Netflix called Pray Away. Uh, which is about the ex-gay movement. Oh. Uh, so there's like Exodus International, you know, is the, is the big one. And I think it's mostly about that. Uh, I did watch it. <laughs> I don't mean to sound like I didn't watch it. But essentially it's the, for a long time in the evangelical church, there has been, you know, groups and especially Exodus International, it was basically designed for people who were in the words of the evangelicals struggling with the sin of homosexuality, hmm. uh, and it and it's an incredible story about the people who were involved in that group, even the people who are leading the group, who came to realize the damage that they were inflicting on so many people, and kind of their stories, people who were in it and people who were leading it, and it's just kind of just really eye opening. Um, Stories that will, I, and I think you know, regardless of what your background is, and regardless of what you call yourself now, and regardless of your perspective, I think there's a lot to be learned, regardless of your position. Um, I think that hearing you know, just people's heartfelt stories and told in an impactful way is is important. So, pray away on Netflix. Oh, and one more thing, we are doing our second annual live stream for yes. charity. The charity this time is Save the Children. That is a live stream on GMM. So the Good Mythical Morning, we're gonna, we have eight hours straight. It's We have a lot of good things planned. Um, 
classic GMM games, special guests, music, a lot of other stuff, all to benefit Save the Children. So that is Thursday, September 2nd, noon to 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific. So mark your calendars to be there for. And don't skip class to be there. Unless it's a class that you could skip. I mean, I mean, let's be serious. I mean, some of them you can. It's for a good cause. Good Mythical Morning Channel, September second. Yes. Eight hour stream. We will see you then, and we'll, you know what? We'll we'll see you next week, like we always do. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best. 